because we want students to process information slowly in school, we need to create uh, an environment that has fewer threats in it, or as few threats in it as possible. Types of threats that we might have in school that might inhibit learning would be physical threats to kids, form of bullies, intellectual threats where kids feel like they aren't academically competent, emotional threats where people are harassing or teasing others, cultural and social threats where a child feels like they're not a part because of the way they look or they, the way they talk, the language they speak, or the tra cultural traditions they have. Um, or threat might be resource restriction where a child doesn't have the food they need, the sleep they need, um, the basic needs they need. And this ties, ties to what I call brain basic number one, that emotions are the gatekeeper to learning. Depending on how the brain perceives information that comes into it, um, your brain will either be ready to learn or will go into a flight and, and flight and or fight mechanism um, and try to survive. Information enters our brain through not just five senses but 19 senses. So we have a lot of different ways that we take in information. The key to learning is how sensory rich the experiences are that we provide in school. Being there experiences are like field trips. They're the most sensory rich where the students' senses are fully engaged because they're actually doing the activity or learning something by experiencing it. Immersion is the next best way to learn something in that you're creating um, an environment that is like the actual one in your classroom. Hands-on with the real thing would be bringing in artifacts to the classroom that are part of what it is you're studying. Hands-on representational would be bringing in models of things that you're studying. Secondhand would be re learning through reading or watching videos. And symbolic would be learning from looking at words or numbers on a page. Although we can reinforce learning with secondhand or symbolic methods, the more sensory rich the initial learning, the more likely kids will retain that information. So that ties to brain basic number two, that learning is a function of experience. The more sensory rich, the more likely it will be remembered. Just try to read the paragraph that you see there and then make any conclusions you can about what this tells you about the brain. Hopefully you noticed that your brain was able to make patterns where there were none, other than the first and last letter being provided for you the brain fills in the gaps because the brain is a pattern-seeking device. It's always looking for patterns in what it's perceiving from the environment and always trying to look for things that are familiar. Information comes from our senses and goes into what's considered short-term memory first, which has limited storage capacity um, and is limited in the amount of time a piece of information can be there. Uh, although our sensory or our short-term memory increases with age up till age 15 where we can remember at least seven things at any one time, um, it's still rather limited in that that's all we can remember uh, so it doesn't help us much in the school setting. We want to get information from short-term memory into long-term memory. While short-term memory serves its purpose, our ultimate goal in teaching is long, getting information into long-term memory. And there are four types of long-term memory, declarative, procedural, emotional, and automatic. Most 
the key to building a memory is that we need to get the information from our senses through short-term memory and then eventually into long-term memory. To get it there, we need to do what's called active processing of the information. And that might involve discussing it, writing about it, um, engaging in a debate about it. The more we actively process information, the more likely it will get to long-term memory, which is our ultimate goal in education. And that ties to brain basic number four, and that we must use what we learn in order to get it into long-term memory.